blue, like the cloudless sky on the sun-filled day, soft, like the sleeping child in the rocking cradle, voice, like the sounds of grief, thought, her gritted teeth, coffin, like the skeleton carried in my darkest deep sleep dream, like the pairs of my child with a new mother tongue, fear, like the carrying a heaviness over endless of fatigue, hope, like arriving in my home uh, when my tears are my own. This is the refugee in the jungle. The jungle is just like, what can I say, just like an animal place. You do not expect someone to live there because it's too cold, there is no much clothes, there is no much food, it's difficult to live there. This is the camp in Calais, known as the jungle, currently home to over 7,000 refugees. When we first visited, the news was full of negativity around it, using dehumanising words like swarms, and marauding migrants to describe the people there. Who are these people? What has happened to them? Where are they from? Where do they want to go? We decided to make the short journey across the channel to meet the humans behind the headlines. Back in England, emotional and confused by the conflicting news reports in relation to the reality, we wrote about our trip on Facebook. The response was phenomenal. We continued to visit the camp, getting to know the incredible people who have found themselves trapped there. Calais has been home to thousands of refugees for many years. Stuck at the border of the UK with no legal way of entering and seeking asylum, they continually make life-threatening attempts to cross the channel. The jungle began in the woods around the town, Refugees lived in makeshift shelters or slept in the streets of Calais. Late in 2014, the French state opened the Jules Ferry Centre on the edge of Calais, where one hot meal is handed out per day. The centre has space to sleep 150 women and children, and the other refugees set up camp around it. This brings us to today, a 7,000 people strong slum, barely tolerated by police, who can destroy parts of the camp with no warning, despite the people living there trying to survive. The jungle is constantly growing and expanding. Its residents made up of entrepreneurs, lawyers, doctors, architects, engineers and more. This is Maya. Let's go. She has been working tirelessly in the jungle for over a year. Well, my name is Maya, but many of the refugees call me the queen of the jungle. At least they used to. Now the jungle has gotten really big and uh, not everybody knows me as the queen of the jungle anymore. <laughs> but I like that name. Where are it's good, huh? Ooh. <laughs> Look, they started putting areas for trash. These are the water points. Happy place to wash. Look, bakery. This is the Afghan area. The Afghans are the business people. Pakistanis too, but Afghans are mostly the business people. They are the ones who have all the grocery stores and all the restaurants. This is my best friend's cafe, Kabul Cafe. Everybody's got a generator now. Everybody's got light inside their stores. And all of this was done by the refugees. And then there's artists who come and do painting. Look at the fancy water points we have now, thanks to uh, Acted. No, this is not the city that does that. It's just non-profit organizations. One of the mosques, I think seven mosques, two churches. And welcome to the mud. This is gonna be muddy all winter long. It gets really bad, you know? So here actually, we were in the Eritrean Ethiopian area and now we are entering the Kurdish area and that's where there's many families as well. Look at that, they tried to dry their clothes, you know, in this weather, good luck. In a sense, you almost have the best and the worst 
because it is a horrible place, but at the same time, there is a human spirit that's absolutely incredible. I feel like I've never been in a place where I've received so much love. I gave a lot of it, and now I'm receiving so much. So the church is an uh, Orthodox church, Ethiopian. The first church that they built here was a very small church and it was adorable. But it burned two weeks after it was inaugurated. A candle was left on and it caught on fire and in 15 minutes there was nothing left. But they decided to rebuild it bigger and uh, it took a tremendous amount of wood. They're constantly improving it. I haven't been here in a while and they put this new painting. It's beautiful. Now you have a Winnie the Pooh rug to come in, which is, you know, that's jungle. First you walk on Winnie the Pooh and then you go into the church. If you see the, the, the frame, you know, I mean, they did that with all sorts of different pieces of wood. They know what they're doing. And they did that with, you know what, a saw and a bunch of nails. On Sunday, when all the women are dressed in white, and lead the singing, it's absolutely amazing. Out there we have Sudanese, way out there we have Syrians. They congregate by nationalities, it's normal, you know, we all do that. All those cultures are incredibly different. They don't live the same way. The Afghans and the Pakistanis, they get along quite well. They're the business people, they're the ones that have the stores, they're the ones that have the restaurants. The Sudanese are completely different. They like to organize themselves in small communities of 15, 20 people, and they cook together, they support each other, they look out for each other, but they're not business people. There is not a single Sudanese that has a store. The Syrians, they don't want to have stores. All they think about is going to England. They don't want to settle like that. Our friends in the camp shared many traumatic stories. However, concerns were high about the sensitive topics of which they spoke. So many wished not to have their identities disclosed. From ethnic cleansing and genocide in Sudan, to ISIS control and torture in Syria, from war and conflict in Afghanistan, to corrupt government control in Eritrea, what people told us was hard to comprehend. We, we left Afghanistan because of war, you know, and since uh, 42 years we've been fighting in Afghanistan. I can't live in this country because war, because of bad political government. It's not safe for me. When I was a kid, in my country, you cannot pray, you cannot believe in Pentecost, eh? not allowed, no church. When I was 17, I go to for soldier boy. The same militia in Jinja, we come by uh, land cruisers and enter uh, at night to my to my village and tell us this land is not for you. The African tribe have no any land here. This is just for Arabian tribe. After that, uh, tell us to morning. Until to morning, if you don't left, you will see what we shall do. We left the village and uh, three children died and their mother died. My mother have been tortured in, in my country and the children that uh, they died while, while the, the aeroplane of the government bombed the village in the night and I see the, the children died. We are not safe, that's why we left the country. If we say we never come, we never gonna left the country, you know. Yeah, ha I had to leave, and that's why, you know. All the people you see here, they have something push them to move out. All of us, we travel by roadway. No one can tell you that he landed by plane. Somebody landed by plane can be here. All you see here, they don't have people. It's very dangerous. Many uh, terrorists are there. Many friends, they dead in the desert. Many, many. We all the way, we walking about 12,000 miles from, here, from there to here. Uh, by walk and train and the mountain and the boat. Uh, the difficult time was was it uh, from uh, Turkey to Greek. Uh, 54 hours was in, in a boat. There was no food, no water. The boat was only for 30 person. 
but they put above 65 or 64. We, did ne we, we never thought we were gonna be alive, you know. We all said we all died, we're gonna die, you know. Because we only see the sky, nothing else. No humans, not mountain, nothing. Finally in Calais, after months, sometimes years of struggle, many people are devastated by what they find. The life here in the camp is very difficult and it's very, very, very dangerous. Sometimes our friends, our sisters, our brothers died on the tunnel station. All human is same. They are European, they are Afghan, from Afghanistan, they are from Iran. They are same. So everybody needs for a good life, for good um, uh, uh, buildings, cars, shops, uh, fabrica, schools, electrics, uh, university. It's challenging, big challenge. It's, it's different. <laughs> Back in home, I have, we have war, we have everything. Yeah? But when I come here, when I come in Europe, I'm never expected to like this place. Jungle is not for us, it's for animals. We were repeatedly shocked to hear what people had gone through to make it to Calais. But for many, the journey was not yet over. Life in France is hard. The system for asylum seekers is stretched and slow. People spend up to two years waiting to be processed. In the meantime, unable to work. The only option is life in the jungle. For this reason, many dream of life in the UK. Why do you want to go to England? We have a lot of reasons. For example, like language is our, our reason. One of thing, language for me. Second thing, in London, the English government, they have support with the refugees. I want to continue my university education. It's better than to stay here, to be in England than to stay here. The French government is doing too much violence for us, so I can't stay here anymore. I want to say for the peoples of England, we are a peaceful peoples. We are a good peoples. One of our good friends in the camp was a 29-year-old Eritrean man called Adam. One day we received a phone call from him. I'm in Liverpool, he told us. Knowing he would have arrived with only the clothes on his back, we decided to visit him and bring him the supplies he needed. It's 38, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Oh, Johnny! <laughs> yeah! Oh, I'm so happy to see you! Have you got a coat? Oh my god, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm very happy. <laughs> oh my god. Everything you need, it's like. Too much, yeah. Oh. You're size 40, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very Smart much. Smart I'm becoming English man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, very nice. Good. Good. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is worthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it very much. Thank you. <laughs> god bless you. <laughs> I prepared a lunch for you and for me. You've already made lunch. Yeah, of course. First saved message received. At the end of a long drive home, we had a voicemail from Adam. Hello, Jasmine. How do you arrive your home? I would like to say thank you to God. I hope you arrive at your home safely. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. Unfortunately, not everyone is as lucky as Adam. In nine months, we went from virgin land to the biggest slum in Europe. Who knows what's going to become of this place? We don't know, because it's not a real town. The government said the people will be tolerated here, which means when they stop tolerating the people, who knows what they're going to do? None of the 6,000 people who live here have heat in their little shelter, and they still sing. This is really the human spirit. Look, they live in the mud, they have no heat, they don't know what their life is going to be, they cannot go to the place where they want to go in England, and they still sing. For the people who are still in the jungle, conditions continue to worsen. The winter is harsh and many don't have the right clothing or shelter to protect them from the cold. The French government have recently begun building an official refugee camp expected to open in early 2016 with the capacity to house only 1,500 people. While this may sound like a good solution, it does not account for the thousands of people who will not be accommodated in this new camp. 
The jungle is unique, a natural refugee camp where people from all over the world live alongside one another after fleeing some of the worst situations across the globe today.